Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Ant2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Health Care, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome to the How to Stay Healthy show. Tonight, we're going to be talking on the topic of neurosurgery. Um, Over the year that I've been doing this show, I think we've only had one other neurosurgeon on the program. Um, So I'm really happy that we're going to have um, one of the top, if not the top, neurosurgeon in the area. Very prestigious um, resume here. And um, I'm going to get right into it and welcome Dr. Lloyd Zucker. Dr. Zucker, how are you doing tonight? Doing well. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, and thank you for fighting that Boca Del Rey traffic this time of the year to get over here. It was uh, really <laughs> yeah. a, a challenge. That was the longest six miles I've had. Yeah, <laughs> I do it every day now, and it just changed recently. But um, thanks again for coming along. I wanted to have a neurosurgeon on the program for um, the listeners and viewers because I think neurosurgery is something that a lot of the general population probably doesn't understand. I didn't understand it until recently. But um, one of the things I, I had first met you um, while you were doing um, this this amazing procedure. It's called deep brain stimulation programming, and you actually do it um, with Dr. R. F. Dalvey of um, the Palm Beach Neuroscience Institute. And um, I just wanted to ask you, kind of explain it from a neurosurgery perspective, and kind of break it down. What is deep brain stimulation programming? How does it work? Um, well. What we basically have is uh, a surgery that can work on patients with a central tremor and patients with Parkinson's. As you mentioned, it's it's a team effort. We have Dr. Dalvey, who is the movement disorder neurologist. I am the surgeon, so as uh, bizarre as it sounds, we're literally putting an electrode about six inches deep into somebody's brain in a very specific target, Um, but when their medications aren't working as well as they used to, or when they can't take medications because of side effects, the deep brain stimulation actually can be very effective. Um, Patients are seen by Dr. Dalvey, evaluated by Dr. Dalvey, as he probably spoke about, and there's a a subgroup of those patients that are surgical candidates. I see them, and then we work together as a team in the operating room to uh, implant the device. And this is for the treatment of Parkinson's disease and essential tremor, which is um, that kind of a tremor that we associate with Parkinson's disease. Normally, it's shaking of the arms. A little different. The, the, the tremor of Parkinson's disease, which we've all seen, is that resting tremor where the patient is okay. sitting and the hand is shaking. Central tremor, very different disease. That is a patient that when they're doing something active, eating, drinking, handwriting, their hand tremors. They have none of the other symptoms of Parkinson's, but it can be just as devastating from a lifestyle point of view. And this DBS um, programming, 
This is um, something that I know um, Dr. Dalvey works a little ahead of the, the um, procedure to do some brain mapping. And then, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you put the lead in and it hooks to a neurostimulator in the chest area, kind of like a pacemaker for the brain. Is that kind of how it? Very much so. I mean, basically, um, we plan where we want to implant the electrode a few weeks ahead using an MRI. Once that's done and we go to the operating room, I plan the target. Um, Dr. Dalvey literally listens to the brain. We put small electrodes in that allows him to hear and more definitively target where we want to put the actual stimulating electrode. That's implanted. He tests that in the operating room. I think whether it's on uh, one of the TV dramas or actually on one of the actual informative shows, People have seen the patient whose tremor stops when the device is turned on. And uh, then after we're all done, the stimulator, as you mentioned, is put, it looks just like a pacemaker. And it's quite honestly a pacemaker for the brain. And it wipes out the tremor very effectively. Wow. Now, um, is the patient awake during the surgery? The patient's completely awake during the surgery. Huh. When we do... Um, any of the invasive parts, so cutting the skin or the drilling we need to do, the patient's asleep. But during the actual um, mapping of the brain, implanting of the electrode, the brain has no pain receptors. Hmm. Uh, we kind of, Mother Nature said, when, once you get there, you don't need to know what's going on. So we can literally talk to the patient, um, ask them to repeat things, ask them to do tasks, um, watch their tremor. And when the stimulator is turned on, watch the tremor disappear so we know we're in the right area. And I'm going to ask you a little bit about that before, but that's not uncommon in some neurosurgery procedures. I'm doing the research before you came on. I was reading a, a, about another procedure and uh, where the patient was awake. But I hold that thought. I want to ask you that when we get there. I, I will. <laughs> I'm now, jumping at the bit. Yeah, I know you are. Um, so, um, the DBS program, um, is that something that you do at Delray Medical Center? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, talk about how that program's grown. Cause I know, um, a few years ago when I saw you, I think it was channel 12 news was there and I saw you on the TV, but since then, I know you guys have done a lot of procedures. I I'm very fortunate to be part of a, uh, very strong team. Um, Dr. Dalvey sees a huge number of patients. Part of those patients are candidates for this procedure. Um, we're, we're proud to have basically the fastest growing DBS program in the state at this point in time. Um, and as important as it is to grow quickly, um, Dr. Dalvey and I are very attentive to our results and have compared those results to major programs. And right now we're very satisfied that we're doing the job that the community needs. Well, congratulations, because um, I've seen a few testimonials via the news, and that, that must really um, warm your heart to, to change someone's quality of life like that. that is awesome. The, the truly, I know it sounds a, a little stale at times, but this is why I do it. Mm -hmm. And to see patients that literally go from uh, wheelchair-bound, bed-bound, unable to do their activities of daily living to being partially or completely independent again, the best thing in the world. Fantastic. And we're here with Dr. Lloyd Zucker, neurosurgeon, chief of neurosurgery at Delray Medical Center, director of neurological services at Delray Medical Center, affiliate neurosurgeon of the Marcus Neuroscience Institute at Boca Regional Hospital right here in Boca Raton and board certified and fellowship trained, which I'm going to get to as well. Now, um, if you want to learn a little bit more about um, Dr. Zucker, a fantastic website, Brain and Spine Meds. Or I'm sorry, brainandspinemds.com. So that's brainandspinemds.com. Ton of info there. Um, your colleagues are there as well. Um, and then all your areas of interest for um, Dr. Zucker is there as well. And the number there is 561-501-7445. Uh, new office there in, Boynt, or in Delray Beach, Delray Beach, 4800 Linton Boulevard, Suite E310 in Delray Beach, and we'll talk Correct. a little bit about more that in a second. Uh, during the research in neurosurgery, I'm fascinated by uh, neurosurgery. Um, 
I'm probably going to get this wrong, but what is a craniotomy and when will this procedure be needed? Was I close? You were very close. <laughs> I mean, so so brain surgery still has the mystique. Yeah. Still there. Okay. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, For f- uh, a craniotomy is basically, in, in the definition, it's opening the skull. Um, the skull can be open for a variety of reasons. Skull can be open for a brain tumor. Skull can be open for bleeding that needs to be repaired or evacuated or an aneurysm. And one of the very interesting things that we're doing now is we've taken that craniotomy to a minimally invasive level. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, at, at Delray, there is some software that allows us with a special kind of MRI to actually outline the fibers within the brain. Once we've done that, we can calculate a path that does the least injury to the normal brain on the way to whatever you're trying to reach below the surface of the brain. Um, Delray in approximately two weeks will be rolling out where a participant in one of the first trials to look at what is called ultra early evacuation of the hemorrhages of intracerebral hematoma. So that's going to be uh, very interesting for us to do. So stay tuned for that. Yep. And I just got to mention Delray Medical Center is 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 just fabulous. That brand new renovation looks great. And then I then I went inside. Unbelievable the the change. Yep. I mean, it was a great hospital. It's, it's a ranch style hospital, meaning that it's very spread out. Yep. But um, that was the original plan. But what they've done with the five story tower. Um, the Trauma Hawk now lands on the roof, the Trauma Hawk elevator right there. Yeah, I'm sure does. you got the hall tour. Oh, You're boy. probably on the roof. <laughs> I, I went I went all the way up. It took me back many years because I started in Baltimore and Maryland, the, at, at University of Maryland, they landed the helicopter on the roof. I, I give those guys kudos. It's tough yeah. enough landing one of those babies on the ground. Unbelievable. On the roof, it's even more interesting. Yeah, so your uh, career's come full circle to the roof of Delray <laughs> Medical Center, to be honest yes. with you. That's fantastic. And and they're a level one trauma center. And I'm going to mention a little bit more about that For sure. in a minute. Um, I, I found some interesting info on your website as well. Um, you use synaptive medical and NICO NICO neuro brain pass to perform some types of neurosurgery. Basically, those are technologies, when we talked a little bit about the minimally invasive aspect of things, if you can imagine many things that we need to access are below the surface of the brain. And for many, many years, that was no man's land. Um, You would have to pass through normal brain to get to the problem, whether it was a hemorrhage or a tumor. Um, Synaptive is a Canadian company that we've been working with that has technology that allows us to basically calculate where the fibers are, like I had mentioned earlier. Brain path is a special cylinder. It's a retractor that spreads the brain fibers. Um, So uh, if you could imagine, obviously without names, there's a gal that presented to uh, Delray about a month ago with a five centimeter hemorrhage, so about two and a half inch hemorrhage paralyzed on her right side, having troubles with her speech. Um, She had evacuation using brain path. And last week walked into my office to say thank you. Unbelievable. It's it's exciting technology. It's changing the way neurosurgery is done. Uh, The minimally invasive aspect has taken a long time to get into neurosurgery. But uh, now that it is, we're seeing some very exciting advances. You and your team saved her life, and then she walked in there. That must be great for her family and friends to, to see that. Good that, is, that is fantastic. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but on the other side, I promised I'm going to ask Dr. Zucker, can craniotomies be done awake? And then a little bit about uh, this neuroblate system that is a laser-guided yep. on the How to Stay Healthy show. County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. 
All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At Old County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. And we're back, uh, South Florida, on the How to Stay Healthy show. We're lucky enough to have Dr. Lloyd Zucker, top neurosurgeon in the area, chief of neurosurgery at Delray Medical Center with us today. Um, I promised the listeners with the tease before the break can carnotomies, and I knew I was going to mess it up. Craniotomies. Cr- craniotomies. I listened to you that time. Be done awake. They can. Uh-huh. Um, all, all of the brain is important, but if you can imagine, there are some areas that are very important in day-to-day action, like an area of the brain that we see with or an area of the brain that we move our arms or legs with. And... The reality is if there's something that we need to remove that's very near one of those areas, there's nothing better than having the patient actually be able to do things during the surgery so you know that you're not disturbing the function. So kind of like how we do the deep brain stimulation, except we make a larger opening, um, we can basically open the skin, open the skull, expose the brain, and then work on the brain while asking the patient to speak or to read, to move, to uh, test sensation. Mm -hmm. We can do all of those things. So basically we know definitively we've preserved the function. So it truly can be done. It's remarkable when you see it. It's still, even for us, jaded neurosurgeon takes your breath away when you do some of the things that we do on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, it's like you're doing surgery, it sounds like, and you're testing at the same time, to, and you're comprehending, obviously, your education and training, and then making the decisions right then and there exactly. to the best of the patient. That is fantastic. We've talked a lot about the brain, and but um, neurosurgery as um, your um, office as well, Brain and Spine Center, goes to the um, spinal treatments as well, and I sure. know... Your fellowship trained in complex spinal surgery and spinal instrumentation. What types of uh, diseases do you um, treat um, that, I guess, attack the spine or affect the spine as an ailment? Basically everything. If you look, um, obviously in our community, there are many degenerative diseases, disc diseases, spinal stenosis. There also can be tumors that extend to the spine. Mm Um, at Delray as a level one trauma center. We see trauma that involves the spine. So basically from the base of the skull where the spine starts to the sacrum where the spine ends or head to tush, we basically cover all aspects of the spine. So if there's fracture, if there's anything that involves the spine, the spinal cord or the nerve roots, it's things that we do. 
Just everything with the spine. Wow, and everything with the brain. We we're pretty much we're very we're very fortunate uh-huh. that as neurosurgeons, a lot of community neurosurgeons end up doing a lot of spine and not as much brain. Our our practice for the past twenty plus years has been about split about halfway between the two, and so we've maintained a practice that does both brain and spine. We're very proud of it. Now, as chief of neurosurgery, I know you uh, that's a step up. You take care, um, lead the program more as paperwork. well. Yeah, more paperwork. <laughs> Are you still um, a, one of the level one trauma neurosurgeons then that's called in for these? Because it's a level one trauma center. Palm Beach County only has two, St. Mary's Medical Center and Del Rey. Exactly. But um, when we hear maybe the trauma hawks going somewhere, maybe you're, you're called in for certain when they need you. At the present point in time, we have a four-man group, myself, Dr. Evan Packer, um, Dr. Ron Young, and Dr. Martin Greenberg. So basically, the four neurosurgeons cover Delray Medical Center, any neurologic trauma that occurs. Basically, one of us gets called in by the trauma surgeon, and whether it's surgical or non-surgical, if it needs a neurosurgeon, we respond within 30 minutes, and we're there in the hospital. Man, that is fantastic. That's really unbelievable. We're lucky to have you in this area. Thank you. And if you want to learn a little bit more about those uh, doctors that Dr. Zucker just mentioned, again, website's brainandspinemds.com. You know what I love most about your website? What? You put your CV, your resume, right on your page. I've never seen that before with a doctor. Right at the PDF, you can click right into it. Well, we basically want, we have an educated clientele out there. I mean, patients want to understand training, want to understand what things we've done. They want to go so far as to make sure that since somebody's been in residency that they've kept up their training and kept up their medical education. And they can go into our website, see the kind of procedures that we do, see testimonials from patients, um, make appointments to the practice, and understand where each of the doctors have trained and what kind of special expertise or interest they may have. I'm, I drive a lot of the research, and so we're doing research in brain tumors, research in head injury, and research in intracerebral hematomas, all at Delray. And those are clinical trials? Yes, sir. Correct. Wow, and if anyone um, is looking for information on their Delray Medical Center's website, and I'll give that out before the end. But I just wanted to mention that because I think friends and family, you mentioned the patient, but friends and family, they are always researching the the doctor, and there you give it, you make it so easy, you just got to click, and I'm already looking at your resume, and I don't have to go search all over the Internet to find your resume, or I just think that's great. You make it so easily accessible. I think that as a physician, it's sometimes for me very frustrating when I see other sites that have pulled small pieces of information, some of it accurate, sometimes inaccurate. So the best thing I can do is provide a site and a source for patients, families, other physicians to be able to get information that I've vetted, that I know is correct, And then they can always reach out to the practice, to our practice administrator, or to one of the physicians if they have additional questions. Right to the source. All your research is there, publications, areas of special interest, fantastic. I know I've said that a few times tonight. Um, Let's um, talk a little bit. We have a little bit more time about the Monteris Neuroblade system. Because I was reading about this as an MRI-guided laser that is used in a brain tumor ablation. Yep. Um, Basically, another Canadian company. Um, But we can place a laser fiber into the center of a tumor, and we can use heat energy to destroy the tumor from kind of the inside out. It's really very interesting because a lot of us are accustomed to hearing radiation for the brain, and it's still very widely used. But the brain actually has a memory for radiation. Once it's been radiated to a certain point, it can't be radiated again. So the Monteris gives us the ability to go after recurrent tumors or new tumors in areas that have been radiated without having to worry about it because the brain has no memory for what's called thermal energy. It's heat. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the MRI basically turned into the world's most expensive thermometer. Oh, okay. Uh, the MRI can see the change in heat or in the temperature of the brain, and so we're actually heating the tumor and taking MRIs constantly, and when the heat reaches the margins that we want it to, it automatically shuts everything off, and that area is basically destroyed by the heat energy. And the listeners and viewers should know the term ablation because we've had a lot of interventional cardiologists and cardiac Very electrophysiologists true. who talk about treating AFib through ablation. And But that's amazing. I didn't know that about the MRI. It's actually reading the thermal energy, the heat. The temperature change. The temperature exactly. change. Yep. Wow, and you use that to ablate brain tumors. Yep. Uh, I think this is, sci- our medical um, uh, technology is moving so fast, but I think this is this is just amazing what we're talking about today on the How to Stay Healthy program. Um, another um, uh, areas of interest I wanted to ask you about, a little bit about, is radio surgery. We, we as the general public, have all heard it, but I don't think we really understand actually what radio surgery is. And I know you do neuro-oncology, which we were just talking about, and stereotactic procedures. What types of ailments require those treatments, and what are those treatments? Well, stereotaxy is using computerized guidance. So many of the things that we've been talking about, brain path, uh, the Parkinson's surgery, use that stereotactic guidance. We're basically looking at a science where we can guide a probe or beams of energy or a laser fiber within about a millimeter's worth of accuracy to a point within the brain. So all of those things are our attempts to get below the surface of the brain and treat things. Uh, Everybody, I think, is, or people that drive by Delray at this point in time, see that huge mound of dirt uh, that's taking place outside the hospital uh, that is going to be the South Florida's second, uh, but a proton beam, which is a very specialized radiation source uh, that basically there's only one down in Miami. There's very few in the state, and uh, Delray will have the ability to treat brain tumors in a way that very few other places can. I read about that. Isn't that like an $80 million project as well? I think it's total, up there. Total. Uh, they, it's we actually a you. very, it's a very new uh-huh. version of it, which while being even more accurate is actually less expensive than some of the other builds, but it's a, uh, significant investment well, in the health of the community. Well, what I'm getting is tenant health is really investing in Delray Medical Center the last few years. I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, level one trauma center. We talked about the renovation. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's so nice to pull in that parking garage and walk right into the hospital. I mean, they really thought it out. They really did. I would love the community to know. I mean, I have wonderful colleagues in Miami. Mm I have wonderful colleagues in Gainesville. But I'd love the community to know that some of the best technologies that neurosurgery has to offer right in their backyard. Right there. And it's very easy hospital to drive in and out of. Um, there's there's not a lot of traffic around. I never have a problem getting in and out. But that proton, we're going to have you back on for that because Be that is something that um, just blew my mind when I was reading it. Um, this is a part of the program I really was hoping we get to. You spend a lot of time um, not only in neurosurgery, clinical trials, with the latest technology, but you have a mentoring program which started at American Heritage School right in Delray Beach, yep. but has also um, kind of um, morphed into, a, you're an assistant affiliate professor at that Charles E. Schmidt School of Medicine at FAU, Florida Atlantic University, right here in Boca Raton. And basically the entire community is growing. We have surgical residents, we have interns, we have practitioners in the community, and we'd love to give everybody kind of a peek into our world and uh, we have it set up so after being cleared through the volunteer office there are certainly some restrictions in terms of vaccinations etc that you have to have before you come into the hospital but once that's all done people can actually come in and view 
one of our surgical procedures. And, uh, I mean, for me, I've been doing it for 30 years, and it gets uh, a little bit regular. You don't really think about things the way people who haven't ever seen it before think about it. Um, so it's uh, it's fun to watch. I mean, I know you've had the opportunity to see procedures in Not different neurosurgery yet, different though. Well, I'm going to sign up. I, I owe you one. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sure you're totally in the zone and focused in there. It must be amazing to see because... Um, I've like I said, I, the listeners know I've seen four surgeries, and I'm just amazed. I I love it. I can't wait to see more. I mean, Glad really, I think you. it's great. And that's going back to a time in medicine. Um, well, you've probably worked like this before, but I'm thinking almost that that TV show that was on a little while ago, The Nick, and how they used to have the the surgery where all the doctors would come and kind of sit in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And I'm going a hundred years back, and then the doctor would do the surgery. In, in front of um, all the... He'd be proctoring. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still... That still exists. Mm -hmm. um, when there are new procedures, um, one of the procedures that we've talked about, brain path, I actually was trained in it. I went to other places that were doing it. Then I had one of the surgeons who was very skilled in it come and proctor me. In my cases, Dr. Young and... Myself have done about 150 of those procedures now, and we proctor other places. Nice. Very comfortable neurosurgeon here. Very experienced as well. Okay. One last question. What are your hobbies and passions in life outside of medicine? Do you have any time to? There's a life outside of medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to um, be the answer. You know, I, I love my family. Um, Definitely. Our son is autistic, so there's a lot of attention and time. We can talk about all that on another day. I um, love music and, uh, you know, just to get outside and enjoy what Florida has to offer. It's the it's the best thing. Especially this time of year, right? Well, yeah, we've been I mean, lucky all, this week. Oh, cool. the it's weather. Like, take a deep breath in and enjoy the cool air. Yeah, if you're listening to us in New York City or Boston or Atlanta, I know Freddie gets the show out to some of those areas. It's been like 65 to 70 during the day here and like 45 to 50 in the morning is just the best crisp mornings ever. I got to ask this question because you mentioned it. Do you ever listen to music in the operating room? All the time. Really? All the okay. time. Okay. What's on the um, the playlist there? <laughs> Can we know that? Um, oh, yeah. For me, it's usually <laughs> classic rock. For Dr. Young, it's usually jazz. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody I know is listening to country in the OR, but... Uh, we always seem to have that in the background. Mm -hmm. um, certainly we have it at night on the trauma cases. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's like it looks like on the TV. It's really well, Yeah, it really is. Well, thanks for being so generous with your time and coming aboard. I know you're very busy, and I want to give out the info one more time. BrainAndSpineMDS.com, or you can call 561-501-7445. Dr. Lloyd Zucker, 4800 Linton Boulevard, Suite E310, Delray Beach. And you got a great staff there as well that can answer any questions. Thank you, and, and you're welcome on this program anytime. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me here. And we'll be right back on the How to Stay Healthy show. Hi, I'm Deanna Barron, RN, with All County Healthcare. You know how I know that I've done a good job? We say goodbye. After you understand the medications you take, once you know that gaining two pounds in a day means you should call the doctor, when your wound is healed, when you can use your nebulizer all by yourself, when the goals that you and your all-county health care team of nurses, therapists, and aides established are met, we say goodbye. Very nice to meet you, and I hope I never see you again. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today. All County Home Health Care, Inc. 
at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Welcome back to the How to Stay Healthy program. We talk neurosurgery for the first half of the program. For the second half, I'm lucky enough to have another great surgeon on the program, a general surgeon, Dr. Jorge Sosa. Dr. Sosa, how are you doing tonight? I am well. How are you? Thank you. And you're a friend of the program. We've had you on before. Thanks for taking the time. Such a busy time of the year and uh, joining us here on the show. I really appreciate sure, my it. My pleasure. Um, I want to get right into it. Body mass index. I know we talked about it last time, but um, I don't know if it's a, a term everyone knows. What is it and, and how is it measured? So body mass index or more commonly called the BMI it's basically the way we measure it it's a formula using your height and weight but basically what i tell my patients it's a way to let us know your relative level of obesity now it's very reliable in adults in children not so much and the one group of adults that is not very reliable in is very very muscular people people who have very large muscle bones uh and for example, I'll tell you, a, a football linebacker or a weightlifter, their weight may be very, very high, but it's really lean muscle mass. So in those folks, body mass index or BMI is not accurate for as a measurement of obesity. But for the rest of us, the average person, BMI is one of the most uh, easiest way to calculate a relative level of obesity. And there's a lot of research behind it. Basically, it's defined by the World Health Organization and by the National Institute of Health. And so I always tell the joke when my wife looks in the mirror and says, honey, do I look fat in this? I go, no, your BMI is 24. You never look fat. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, you know, BMI has definitions. So for example, between 20 and 25, it is considered a normal body mass index. So you're not obese, you're not overweight, you're at your perfect weight. Now, people think, oh, ideal weight is like one number, 140 or 150 or 160. It's not. It's a range because we all have some slight different body habits, body build. So within the range of 20 to 25, you have a normal body mass index, a normal weight. Now, when your BMI goes over 25, so you're in between 26 and 30, you are considered overweight. It is a national, international definition. You're overweight. At those levels of, of weight, you're really not hurting your health. You may not look the most attractive in your summer clothes, in your bikini, et cetera, but you're really not hurting your weight. So you're overweight. You should really do something about your diet. You should add a little more exercise, but it's not really going to hurt your health. Once your BMI gets over 30, from 30 to 35, you're called obese. It is called class 1 obesity. Now, between 30 and 35, the impact on health is there, but is not severe. You begin to see high blood pressure. You begin to see people with high levels of cholesterol or blood sugar, the markers that say you're not the healthiest. But you're not really sick, and you're not really losing a lot of your life span due to that level of weight. Now, when your BMI gets over 35, you're called morbidly obese. Why? Because at that level, there's clearly research that shows you are going to have diseases that are associated with obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, uh, liver problems. And those levels of obesity, a BMI over 35, begin to kill you younger. So you begin to lose years of lifespan to the point that once your BMI is in the 50s, you tend to die about 20 years younger than anyone else with your age your genetic background that has a BMI under 30. When you compare those two folks, the person with a BMI over 50 will lose 20 years of average lifespan. Those are the levels we call morbid obesity. Those are the levels that we do something very active and invasive to fix, such as weight loss surgery. Okay, now um, what are the treatment options today available for that 
type of, of morbid obesity, when it gets to that point, like you said, when something um, invasive um, needs to be done and the other things aren't working, like uh, I, I know people try a lot of diets or exercise, but it gets to a point where it's probably just not going to work. Right, and that point is about a BMI of 35. And, and so we have a, a structure in our practice. If your BMI is between 30 and 35, we're going to do medical weight loss, medications, a nutritionist to try to get your BMI down. Once your BMI is over 35, the research is very clear that really the only long-term solution that works permanently is what we call bariatric or weight loss surgery. Now, there are several types we can discuss. Some are more uh, have different characteristics, but once your BMI is over 35, we're really looking at weight loss surgery to get your health back. Okay, tell us a little bit about um, one we've heard a lot about is gastric bypass, and and that is done uh, laparoscopically. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. So pretty much, and that's what really changed uh, weight loss surgery, bariatric surgery. I mean, most people don't realize weight loss surgery was done since the 60s in 1967. The first operations for morbid obesity in the U.S. were begun. But it was a very large incision, very problematic recovery, lots of complications. What really was a watershed moment is when we started doing this procedure laparoscopically or minimally invasive, where we put small little openings in the body with a special TV camera and very special tools we can do the operation. So the recovery is very fast. Typical hospital stay is down to about one to two days now. And the complication rate right now is running less than 1 in 100, less than 1%. So weight loss surgery has become very effective and very safe, recovers very fast, and that's why really you're seeing the large amount of folks undergoing the surgery. Now, gastric bypass is the gold standard. It's the standard operation that all the rest are compared to. It is among the most effective. It not only decreases the size of your stomach, but it bypasses the first portion of your intestines. So you get what we call restriction. You can eat less and malabsorption. You absorb less calories, especially sugary calories. Because of the combination, it tends to have the greatest weight loss, and it tends to be the best operation for folks with medical problems from their obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. It has the highest cure rate of medical problems of all the various procedures. Now, um... We also heard of the, the lap band. How, how is that different than a gastric bypass? Well, in the lap band, what we used to do is basically we'll put a band around the upper part of the stomach so we pinch it off into about a quarter mm -hmm. on the top and the rest on the bottom. And we would make the opening so tight that when you would eat, the food wouldn't empty from that top quarter into the rest of it. So you would feel full and you could eat a small meal. Unfortunately... After about a decade of doing it, we have found that the band has a lot of problems, mainly because it's a foreign body. It's a piece of plastic inside. It has, it's up against the stomach, which is constantly moving. So it has caused a lot of what we call slips. So the map moves where it's, from where it's supposed to be to somewhere else, and that's a problem. We have to take it out. Or the band actually cuts its way into the stomach. That's called an erosion or an ulcer. We have to take the band out. The other thing that has happened with the band is lots of folks have cheated the band by learning not to eat solid food but drink their calories. And if you drink with a band, you don't get the feeling of fullness because it goes right through the band. And if you get used to eating high-calorie drinks, the band failure rate is very high. So the failure rate with the band is quite high, and the studies have shown that after about 10 years, almost nobody still has the band in because of problems. So we've pretty much gone away from the ban. I'll tell you some numbers. Several years ago, about 30% of the operations in the U.S. were lap bans. This past year, less than 5% of the operations in the U.S. were lap bans, which tells you that we've kind of gone away from that procedure. And for the folks that don't need as much as a gastric, we've gone to the third procedure, which is called the sleeve gastrectomy, the sleeve. Uh, and people call it the banana because the stomach, the very small stomach ends up looking like a banana. So, and that's the new operation for moderate levels of weight loss that we're doing rather than the band. Yeah, I've heard a lot about that, that laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. It seems like exactly, and, and I know it, it's correct because um, we have the, the, the great uh, general surgeon here on Dr. Jorge Sosa that 
Uh, yeah, you used to hear a lot about the band, and now you're hearing a lot more about sleeve gastro gastrectomy. And we've heard, obviously, it sounds like, uh, well, you said it, the laparoscopic gastric bypass is the gold standard, but there is another option, the sleeve gastrectomy. So that that's great to hear. Um, I wanted to ask you, because I had read this um, myself, do candidates for bariatric surgery first have to be approved for the surgery by their primary care physicians before they see you? Well, that's an insurance issue. So oh. medically speaking, no. So from a medical point of view, no. And if you have, for example, an open program, no. But there are many insurance plans that require what's called a referral from your primary care physician to any specialist, such as myself. So, yeah, in those cases, you have to go first to your primary care physician and say, you know, discuss the issue of your obesity, your diseases, et cetera, and then they will give you a referral for us to see. So that's an insurance question, mm -hmm. not really a medical question. So, yeah, for multiple insurance, your primary care physician has to approve the referral first. For other insurance plans, no, they're we're open, so you can pick your your surgeon and just go directly to them. This is what I was uh, getting to. I, I got ahead of myself there. I wanted to ask you: Do um, prospective patients work with a uh, dietitian prior to surgery, and um, how, how does that work? I, I, that's what I was I was reading about a little bit about. Oh, absolutely. So uh, every good bariatric program that is nationally certified is a multidisciplinary program. The surgery is one aspect, is one of the tools that we use. So everybody's enrolled in a program that has multiple professionals working with the patient. And this begins before surgery. They're going to have a nutritionist. They're going to have a psychologist. They're going to maybe get some exercise in if they're able, if their joints, et cetera, allow it to prepare for surgery. So, yeah, and then they're going to have to continue to see the nutritionist after surgery because there are steps in the diets that you have to learn because we want you to begin a new healthy way of eating. So, absolutely. And, and, and the other thing that the nutritionist is very helpful, if the patient is very large right before surgery, let's say 450, 500 pounds, over 500 pounds, we want some weight loss before surgery to proceed with surgery. The standard patient, no, but the very large BMI or very high weight patients, we want to lose some weight right before surgery to make the surgery a little more straightforward. And um, you heard Dr. Sosa talk about the um, certifications there. If you go to thesosaclinic.com, so it's the word um, the, and then Dr. Sosa's last name, S-O-S-A clinic.com, the certifications are right there. Now, I'm going to talk with you about the clinic in a, a minute, um, Dr. Sosa, but I wanted to ask you, um, what is the type of lifestyle a patient will have to live prior to ba bariatric surgery and afterwards? You kind of started there, very large patient will have to see a dietitian before and, and make an effort to lose weight because it's going to make the surgery better. But even uh, if you go a little deeper into that, lifestyle changes are going to be ha have to be made before and after surgery. Just not you don't have a surgery and then like this and then be able to eat whatever you want. This is something that it's it's a quality of life change, correct? Right, and, and and we're going to work with the patient to show them and educate them. And then there are things that are particular to the operation. For example, after you have a gastric bypass, you will not tolerate eating sugar. So if you have ice cream, if you have creme brulee, if you have chocolate cookies, you will get ill. You will get uh, sweaty, very uh, tired, very sleepy because of the effect of the of the bypass, and then you will get severe diarrhea. You can even get dehydrated. So, I mean, some folks try it because everybody tries it, but once they cheat once or twice and realize how bad it feels, so they have to learn that that does not happen with the sleeve. So each operation has its own particular changes and adjustments. Obviously, the weight loss with the gastric bypass is going to be way superior to the sleeve. So we also have to get the patient prepared for those lifestyle changes. We want everybody after surgery to begin some kind of exercise program. Obviously, it depends on their age, if they have bone disease, arthritis, etc. But yeah, the, the concept here is not just have you know a simple surgery, you're done. Is to have this surgery combined with an entire approach with lots of different folks helping you to really 
get obesity out of your life and end up with a much healthier lifestyle, off the medications, much more active, and that's our goal. And you said it, it's, a, it's a lot of people helping out the patient. I know you have a great team um, over at the Sosa Clinic and at the, the hospitals um, where you do bariatric surgery at. Um, and I want to ask you about the Sosa Clinic. I am going to get to that, but I, I want to um, talk a little bit since we're still talking about the stomach area. Um, you're also able to help with um, reflux or heartburn as well. This isn't just a bariatric surgery practice you have. You, you can also help with those ailments. Yeah, right. So as a general surgeon, now my interest is mostly what we call, in, in medical terms, we call it foregut surgery. In other words, surgery around the esophagus, around the stomach, the gallbladder, the biliary trees. So I do very specialized surgeries in that area. So if a, if a person comes to me with severe heartburn and they're very obese, well, actually the gastric bypass will not only make them skinny, it will cure the heartburn. But if a person comes with severe heartburn and they're not really very obese, they don't need an operation to lose weight. There is an operation we can do to fix the heartburn where we actually replace the valve that's been damaged through the years or because of a hiatal hernia. We can fix the hiatal hernia and we can give them a new valve. And the new valve, we make it out of their own stomach. So it's no foreign material, it's no plastic tubing. It's their own stomach that we use and we create and replace the valve that doesn't work and allows all that acid to come up and burn them. And it's called a fundoplication. And we do it again, minimally invasive or laparoscopic, and the results are quite, quite good. About 90% of my patients are able to get off all heartburn medications. They don't have to sleep on those six inches of wood, lifting their bed or all those pillows. So it really changes their lifestyle. So. Folks with severe heartburn, there is a surgical operation that's minimally invasive that actually gets rid of it. Oh, what is the recovery time normally on the laparoscopic fundoplication? I hope I said it right. Right, exactly. Laparoscopic fundoplication. It's actually just like having your gallbladder removed or your appendix removed. You're in the hospital one day. By a week, you're doing all your normal stuff, driving. Most folks are back to work. So because it's very small wounds, very little pain, the recovery is quite, quite fast. That is that is fantastic. All these minimally invasive techniques that surgeons are doing nowadays is is really uh, great for the patient because they're not staying in the hospital as long. Uh, I know that there's a less chance of infection if you get out of the hospital quicker as well. Now, um... What is the the Sosa Clinic? Great name, by the way, the Sosa Clinic. I really My like wife that. Came up with that one. <laughs> no, it really, it really flows, and it's easy to find online. You, you know, you just type in thesosaclinic.com. Great website as well. Tell us a little bit about it. So, as I said, I'm a general surgeon, and, and my great interests are what we call foregut surgery. So we offer, obviously, the weight loss surgery, the bariatric surgery, the reflux surgery, surgery for the gallbladder. But... Because of our patients after surgery really require a long-term a management plan for their weight, for their nutrition, et cetera, we just didn't dedicate ourselves to surgery, you're done. But it's like we have a complete program for even years after weight loss surgery, or even folks who haven't had surgery who need weight loss, we have a huge interest on diet, supplements, etc. So that's what we do at the Sosa Clinic. We have the surgical weight loss program and we have a medical weight loss program. There's some very good new medications approved for diet suppression by the FDA. Uh, there's one particular one that I'm using quite successfully, getting patients to lose 40, 50, 60 pounds. We've had two ladies who lost 80 pounds on this medication and it's been approved for long-term usage. So we basically provide a comprehensive weight loss management program, uh, supplements. We have our own vitamin lines. We have obviously, we teach folks how to get their proper nutrition, how to get proteins. We have several nutritionists that work in the clinic. So it's a whole comprehensive program. I'm really into getting folks to change their lifestyle, lose the weight and get active and enjoy life. That's As a great. side effect of that, all the diseases are going to go away. But the quality of life is going to be so much better 
Yeah, and enjoy this. Uh, people can get out and enjoy this beautiful weather and their quality of life. Let me give out the number there, 305-558-0411 for the Sosa Clinic um, and Dr. Jorge Sosa. Dr. Sosa, where do you do um, surgery at? Our certified center, which we're one of the only places in South Florida but that's doubly certified, is Palmetto General Hospital. So Palmetto General Hospital is certified by both agencies that certify bariatric centers, by the American College Surgeon and by the SRC. So we are the double certified center of excellence in bariatric surgery in South Florida. We've done thousands of operations there in the last decade. And the hospital has a fully comprehensive program. They have a wing that's just for the bariatric patients with obviously, as you can imagine, this laparoscopic surgery requires very advanced video instrumentation and very advanced technology have it all so and we do the surgery at palmetto general hospital which has been one of the leading bariatric programs in south florida for over a decade and we've had a few um surgeons and doctors on the program from that great hospital in hialeah um and it's a great place medical plaza is there as well i love going to that at hospital it's it's really a great hospital in south florida dr sosa um we're pretty much out of time, but I really wanted to thank you for coming on the program again. And if anyone's got questions, the SosaClinic.com, 305-558-0411. Dr. Sosa, you're welcome anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored 